It's lunchtime for my animals, so let's make my pet fox Pongo his lunch. We're currently weaning Pongo onto raw food, so he's had raw chicken this morning, but we're still giving him his normal cooked dog food, just so we don't upset his digestive system by doing it too quickly. I'm just starting off with this regular basic dog food. And now we're going to boil an egg and give him half of this. Just like a lot of my animals, Pongo requires a taurine supplement in his diet. So we're going to add a very small amount of this. And I'm just sprinkling this over the base of his food. And of course his diet is mostly protein based, but we're going to give him some sliced apple as well. We've got Pongo's lunch here and it looks deliciosa. And now we're going to feed it to him. Hello, baby. And Pongo is only actually outside for feeding time. He's inside usually, but he needs his own space when he eats. Foxes are very territorial over food, as you're going to be able to tell. Hey, baby. Any food he doesn't eat, we'll try and hide, but we'll take it out. But yeah, that's Pongo's lunch. I'm collecting pearls from real oysters every day until I have enough pearls to make my mum a pearl necklace, and I just got a drill to drill through the pearls. Obviously, I can't turn pearls into a necklace unless I have this thing, which drills a little hole in, and then I can put some string through it. Okay, I'm opening up the first pearl right here. Let's get it out. <laughs> oh, guys, this is one of the pearls that actually cracked because I stood on it by accident, so it's super easy to open. Oh my gosh! A green pearl! This is so cool, look how pretty it is. Okay, I'm now opening another pearl and this one's sealed. I'm using this little bookmark to open it, and by the way, this bookmark is actually, me and my mum bought it on the ferry when we were moving to Ireland when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> okay, let's crack it open. Oh. And in this one, we have a green and an orange pearl. Stay tuned for my next video where I'm gonna be drilling the pearls. Okay guys, so I tried to do the synchronized swimmer hair um, and it peels off. So usually they just pull it here and it peels off, but I don't know if I used the wrong amount of gelatin and I'm not exaggerating here. I cannot get it off my hair. I can get it off there. I don't know if I didn't do it thick enough or what, but my, this is stuck. Look at the inside of my hair. I have ruined my hair. What, what should I do? And by the way, our boiler is broken, so we don't have any hot water. So it's not like I can go and run this under hot water either. This, <laughs> why, why did it do this? Okay guys, so my hair is completely rock solid with gelatin and I did it wrong. I mixed it into my hair instead of slicking it back. So my hair is infested with bits of gelatin and my mum is gonna help me get it off. My mum thinks the only thing that's gonna work is dish soap. So we're gonna try this. And as you can see, it is really stuck onto my hair. And this is water resistant, by the way, that's why swimmers use it. But I've seen everyone just be able to peel it off. Okay, we're now gonna put dish soap into my hair. So, squeeze. And now we're just gonna try and scrub it out, but it doesn't even feel like it's doing anything yet, but we'll, we'll put some water on there. No. Oh, no. Okay guys, it's starting to come out sort of and I will keep you updated. Okay guys, so no one in the UK washes their fruit. And if you say you wash your fruit, you are a liar. I only wash my fruit when I'm feeding it to animals, but for me, I wash nothing. 
Anyway, apparently if you put strawberries into water with salt, all of the bugs from the strawberries will crawl out because they can't stand being in the salt water and you will see what you're really eating when you don't wash your fruit. Okay, I'm pouring lots of salt into the cup. Now we're gonna add some water. Now I'm using a spoon to just stir the mixture together. And now we are gonna add our strawberries. And now we give it about an hour or so and hopefully in an hour I will have a load of bugs to show you guys. Hey guys, so today we're dyeing my dog's hair and we are going to be dyeing Honey's hair red. This hair dye is basically just beetroot juice and it washes out after one use, so we're going to dye her hair, get my mum's reaction and then we'll wash it out. It's completely safe, I've had it on my skin before, it's basically a dog shampoo with colouring in it, so she needs a bath anyway, so it's just for fun. So I'm only going to dye her tail or otherwise we might make a huge mess, but I'm just going to squeeze this on and rub it in. Okay, so I got the hair dye onto Honey and she looks like she should be called Simba, um, but we've got to leave this for like 20 minutes and then we're going to go and give her a bath. I'll be washing it out of her today, but in the next video I'm going to get my mum's reaction and I'm not going to tell my mum, I'm just going to let her see and see if she notices. Okay guys, so apparently everyone's fruit actually is full of bugs and if you put it in salty water, the bugs will crawl out. Well, I've left these strawberries sitting in the salt water and I'm going to show you the results. So I've checked and there are absolutely no bugs. There are little wormy things, but I'm pretty sure that's just seeds coming off of the strawberries. Look, if I zoom in, you can see that there's lots of little things crawling around, but honey, no! <laughs> uh, you can see lots of things crawling around, but no bugs. So if you don't wash your fruit, you are safe. I have 30 pets and today is bath day, so we're going to be bathing all of my pets. And up first is Pongo, our baby fox cub. Pongo! Hey, little baby. <laughs> first up, we're going to run a lukewarm pool of water. And I've just put Pongo into the bath and now we're going to wet his coat. But before we do this, we're going to try and put a shower cup on him so he doesn't get water in his ears. Pongo has his shower cup on and now we're going to wet all of his fur. Now Pongo's coat is wet, it's time to wash his coat with some shampoo. Oh Pongo, you look so cute. <laughs> yes you do. Hello guys, my name is Pongo the fox. Baby Pongo is now all soapy and we're going to rinse the soap off and then get him dried up. Pongo is now half dry and it's a nice sunny day so we can just let him lounge around in the sun and he'll dry off shortly. Next up is Goose, my crazy parrot, but he's super easy to bath because he does it all himself. Goose is now enjoying bath time, cleaning himself, and he's looking great. I only filmed this video in 60 seconds, so if you want a part two, let me know. Okay guys, so my mum is obsessed with cleaning her ears, and she cleans them out every single day. But I actually read online that cleaning your ears every single day makes your ears a lot worse, right by your eardrum, and it produces a lot more wax. And these right here are earwax candles, so we're going to use these on my mum's ears and see how waxy her ears really are. Okay guys, so first of all, we're just placing the ear candle in my mum's ear. Okay guys, so I've now got the earwax candle in my mum's ear and I'm just going to hold it here until it burns down to about here. By the way, when using these, please be careful. The candle takes quite a while to burn, so I'm going to let my mum hold this until it's burnt out and then I'll be back with a part two to see how much wax she actually has. Okay guys, we just finished with the earwax candle in my mum's ear and now we're going to go blow it out. Okay, I'm just going to slowly unwrap the earwax candle and... Oh my goodness. Her ears have so much wax in them. So in my video the other day, I proved that these were real by burning one out on its own. And as you can see, there is so much more wax when I just did it in my mum's ear. And now it's time to reveal to my mum that cotton buds maybe don't work. Mum, look at all the wax that came out of your ear. No, it did not. Yeah? Shut up, Kyle. Do you think they're fake? That didn't come out of my ear. It did. That's from the candle. No. They've got to be fake, haven't they? Yeah, wax isn't fake. Oh. Hmm. You need to clean your ears up better. Oh. I haven't been able to book a haircut for three weeks, and my hair now looks like this, so I'm going to give myself a bowl cut. My mum isn't home at the minute, so it's not like I can ask her to cut my hair, and I thought, why not try it the old-fashioned way and give myself a stylish bowl cut? Okay, so I just cut the length to here, which is what we're going for, and now we're going to cut it across here as well. There we go. And then the last step is this side. Okay, guys, um, we have our bowl cut. I look like Will Byers, um, but now we're going to mess my hair up, and what on earth have I done? Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna need that haircut. This looks horrific. Okay, guys, so we got the Big Papa Van Holten's pickle, and we're all gonna try it. And we're gonna rate it, but we don't have the fruit roll up or tackies. Or tackies. No, you don't. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a McDonald's pickle. It does. Okay. <laughs> Everyone slide it up. <laughs> Ready? Right, three, two, two, one. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's really good. Oh, it's not as crunchy as I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're gonna drink the juice. <laughs> I don't know how. Do you just put it back in the box? Yeah. It's just so salty. Yeah, mid. Hey guys, so today is Milo the Meerkat's birthday and we obviously have to celebrate so we're gonna start by doing one of his favourite things which is giving him a bath. We're starting with a little birthday protein filled treat which is some Moreo worms. Yum yum yum. As always we're just starting with a lukewarm puddle of water and I've added some bubbles in there to make this spa day the best. Come on then Milo, in you go. Milo loves bath time. Now Milo's fur is all wet, we're gonna let him play around in the water and I'll be back with a part two where I actually scrub his coat. He is so relaxed in the bath, he literally loves it. <laughs> Milo's in the bath and he looks like a little seal. Milo, where's my meerkat gone? You look like a little baby seal. Yes, you do. <laughs> so now that his fur is all wet, I'm just gonna rub some soap into it and get him cleaned. And I don't bath Milo very much, but because we're gonna be taking him out today a little bit, I just thought it'd be best to clean his coat and he actually really enjoys bath time. And you can actually see how much he needed this by all of the murkiness in the water. The meerkats do clean each other, um, and Dorothy will obviously like help him if he's got a little mat or anything, but it's always good just to give him a little bath, and it means we can check his health while we do it. Because meerkats fight so much, sometimes he'll have little wounds and stuff that you can't really see when his fur is all fluffy. Oh, hello, baby. <laughs> Happy birthday, Milo. We love you lots. This is part two of bath time for Milo, and we're going to scrub his coat with some sensitive baby shampoo. This is Milo's last few months of living inside, so I'm really enjoying it before he goes out into the wilderness. Oh, Milo, I love you. I can't believe he turns four today. Milo is now all soapy, and we're going to get him washed off. By the way, guys, a lot of people believe meerkats hate water, which is generally true, but Milo, because he's been bathed from so young, actually really loves the warmth. All right, Milo, let's get you all clean. Okay, guys, Milo's all clean now, and we're going to get him out the bath. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Oh, big stretch. And now, guys, it's time to get Milo dried off and give him lots of attention. When meerkats are super relaxed, especially if you scratch them on their neck, they roll their eyes back because they love it so much. I would love if I could bath Milo and Dorothy together, but because she's a female, she's super hormonal and just hates the whole experience with humans. All right, I'm going to let Milo get dried off now. I'm so excited for the farm when I can have a bathroom just for my animals. <laughs> People ask me this question all the time, how do I remember my pet's name? So I'm gonna tell you all of my pet's names. Up first, we have Twiglet, and I remember Twiglet as Twiglet because she's smaller than my other cat, and she has green eyes. And then right here, we have Twiglet's sister, Gristle, and she has blue eyes. She's also bigger, fluffy, and she has a different personality. Please ignore the red on my nose. I waxed my nose before this video, and now my nose looks weird. Right here we have my Pac-Man frog, and his name is Mr. Noodle Cakes. This is my giant African land snail, Turbo. I have two giant African land snails, but I have forgotten the other one's name. I feel like it was Spencer or Spencer. I think Spencer. Then this is Frank, my giant African millipede. This cutie right here is Flo, the hedgehog lesser Tenric. And then we have Simon, and he's a male, so he's much fatter. He also needs his nails cut today. Over here we have the two Bambinos, and one is called Fraser, and the other one is... The other one is... I can't quite remember. And right here we have Snappy, my amputee bearded dragon, and I think you can see why he's called Snappy. He's three-legged because he was attacked by another bearded dragon when he was a baby, and this is why he's so aggressive. Up here we have Blaze, and Blaze recently had surgery, so I'm not gonna go near him. Yaman chameleons hate being held anyway, so he's not the happiest little guy. This right here is Patricia Barbara Margaret Thomas. And Freddy is up here. He was just sleeping, so I've annoyed him now. This right here is Dorothy, but she's very, very aggressive, so I won't go near her. And then up next is Goose. Hello, baby. Hello. Mwah. Kiss, kiss. Mwah. 
And then up here we have our new Parallette Matilda. We took Matilda on recently because unfortunately Goose's friend died and Matilda keeps him company. This right here is Pog, my white tree frog. This right here is Prudence and she is just massive. I think she's a girl because of the look of her ears, but I'm not entirely sure because I think I have heard her make a mating call. Please help. And then this right here is... I feel like I actually called him Prudence, but now I know he's a boy. I think maybe Billy. Billy the frog. This right here is Stanley, and Stanley is a scorpion. And then after that, we have my dogs, my fox, and my other makeup, Milo. So if you want a part two of this, let me know, because this video is like nearly three minutes long. Okay, so I found this at Sephora and we're gonna try it. As you can see, I do have pimples. I have blackheads here, just like most people, and I'm gonna see if this can get rid of them. But instead of putting it just on my nose, I'm gonna put it on my whole face. And I also have blackheads here, so we'll put it here. Okay, guys, and now for the weirdest part, we're gonna add the seeds, like so. <laughs> And now we're gonna wait for this to dry and I'll be back with a part two. Okay, this is already burning my face, so I need to take it off. You never know, this burning may actually be it working, but let's wipe it away. Well, all of the seeds just went. Okay, I'm gonna go wash this off properly and then we'll see if there's any difference. Okay, I just washed my face and I put my moisturizer on, but as you can see, my face still looks the same. This thing is a lie. Hey guys, so today Pongo the fox cub went to the vets for the first time ever and he got his vaccine. So we're now gonna give him his flea and worming treatment. So this is the tablet we're using and we just have to give him one per month. Hello baby. Are you ready to get wormed? Yeah? <laughs> okay guys, so we've put the tablet into a little bit of salmon and now it's time to feed it to Pongo. There you go, baby. Oh, you can see the tablet. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is he going to avoid the tablet? Nah, he's got it. Good boy, Pongo. Yes, you are. And now Pongo will be worm free. Mwah. Yes, you will. <laughs> hey guys, so today we're taking baby Pongo through the Starbucks drive through for the first time ever. It's a really hot day and we were going on a little drive, so I'm going to get him an ice water. Hi, could I please get two of the new lovely bubbly drinks? And then could I get an ice water, please, for my baby fox? Okay guys, so I just ordered the ice water for Pongo and he's getting very warm, so this is a very good idea. And then after this, I'm taking him for a little run around. Okay, so update, she said she's gonna put some lemon in the water for us. Also, I'm trying the new blueberry uh, thingy with bubble tea. And this geezer forgot to put in the bubble tea, so now he's adding it in it. Some people, bro. Okay guys, so we got our lemon ice water and now we're gonna offer his majesty some. You want some of your water? Good boy. Pongo says he doesn't like Starbucks water and he prefers McDonald's. <laughs> so foxes actually eat lemon, so we're gonna see if Pongo wants some of the lemon. He gave it a lick, but <laughs> no. Oh, there we go. Is that nice? Pongo, it's good for you cooling down. Maybe he's just frightened by the really cold temperature. Okay guys, so turns out Pongo is not a fan of boring water. He wants the blueberry ice thing. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Pongo adventures. One, two, three, pee for papas. It's a papas party, pee for papas. I have 30 pets and today is flea treatment day. So we're gonna give all of my pets flea treatment. Okay guys, first up is Nala and we're just gonna squeeze it onto her coat. And next up is Hunter and we're just gonna do the same thing. Okay guys, and now it's time for Dorothy, our very aggressive female meerkat. That's why I'm wearing the animal handling gloves. There we go. And now it's Milo, our very friendly male meerkat. And now it is Gristle's turn. There we go, Gristle, and we're gonna give this a little rub. Because she doesn't have any hair, she can't absorb it as well. Okay guys, and now I'm just squeezing the same onto Twiglet and we'll let that soak in. 
Okay guys, and now we're on to the monkeys and this first one is Freddy. And now it's Trish, our female monkey. And that's the monkeys all done. Make sure to follow for a part two. Okay, so as we all know, raisins are actually just dried out grapes. And I've seen about a million videos on my For You page this week of people pumping air into raisins and turning them back into grapes. So I went through all of the effort of actually ordering a syringe so that I can try it. Syringes have actually always been one of my biggest fears, so this is a blunt syringe, so it's not scary, don't worry. Okay, we've got our syringe, and I feel like a doctor. And now we're gonna take our raisins, which I actually had to go through a lot of effort to buy this morning. Here we go. Okay, guys, and now we are gonna pump the air into the raisin. Slowly. Okay, I'm still going. Okay, guys, I will be showing you the result in my next video. This is actually pretty cool. Okay, I tried to make this yesterday and it didn't work. I had all of the ingredients, I did everything right, but because you guys wanted it so early, I then didn't let it cool down completely. I took it out of the mold early and it just snapped. So I ended up with this thing that was nearly there, but not quite. But you know me, if we fail, it's fine. We'll try again. Okay, so first up for the main ingredient, a cup of sugar. We're using our mini pan, because I have a feeling if I use my mini pan, I might just have better luck. And now half a cup of what we're made of, which is water. Now you need two tablespoons of glucose syrup, so I feel like this might actually be what I did wrong. I am just guessing, but I'm adding a little bit more, because I feel like this gives it the stretch. And the one thing I didn't add yesterday was vinegar because I read it was for the flavor, but you never know. It could actually be something to do with making it correctly. Now some food dye. Okay, and now with a teaspoon, we're going to mix it all together and just make sure we dissolve all of the sugar until we have our good syrup. Okay, so we have our BTEC mold. I don't actually know what BTEC means, but I think it means rubbish. So we have our rubbish mold. And now time for the risque part. We're going to pour the mixture in and we need to do a bit on both sides so it doesn't go underneath okay as you can see it's leaking a little bit but that's fine we're gonna pour all of our mixture in like so wow that's a lot okay so to be honest this looks 10 times better than yesterday's already but for my impatient people we can't put this in the fridge we have to let it cool down by itself and it has to come to room temperature so i'm gonna sit here staring at it until it's completely cooled down to room temperature and then i'll be back with a part two where we make our diy cotton candy please be patient i, I can't make it cool down any faster okay see you soon love you keep scrolling if you're sensitive to anything gross because what i'm about to show you will make you feel sick if you've ever thought about getting a hairless cat please think twice or three times or four just to be safe I love my cats, but honestly, nothing has prepared me for the amount of oil they leak. And I'm not just a random person who got hairless cats because I thought I would look cool and saw that they were very cute. I have other pets. I thought I was prepared. But because my cats are mostly active at nighttime, I've not been sleeping in my room recently. I've been sleeping in the spare room and they have destroyed my bedding. So I'm going to show you. So this is how my bedding should look, lovely and white. But this is what my cats have managed to do in about five days of using my bed tell me why this looks like a girl has got into my bed with way too much makeup on and smeared her face all over my sheets and then it's turned like this or a guy you know everyone can wear up everyone can wear makeup but yeah i don't know what to do should i get darker bedding but then if i get darker bedding is that kind of gross because then i can't see the dirt or should i just buy my cat a wig and then we won't have a problem <laughs> we just found an abandoned petrol station in the middle of nowhere so look, we were just driving along and we found this petrol station from like, I don't know, 50 years ago or even longer. And it's completely abandoned. And is that a car? Let's see. This is, this is super creepy. But let's see if they have... Oh my gosh, they even have a fridge from where they had snacks. And then you would like come into the petrol station, pay for your petrol and then get a drink. My dream is to actually one day buy something like this and then like refurbish it or I don't know, just just buy it, turn it into a cool house. Okay, so we're walking through. Oh, they had a car wash for three pounds fifty. And look, this is so weird. The phone and the tiller there. John, I found the till. Let's see if there's any money inside it. I don't think there's any money in the till. 
Okay, guys, I'm running out of time, but if you want me to break this open, make sure to tell me. Buy these balloon ring jump cakes. Okay, I love bubble tea, right? Like boba, where you have the little pearls and everything like that. But that is the world's largest boba ball I've ever seen in my life. I know they're called rainbow drop cakes, but they literally just look like boba. So all we've got to do is start with some balloons, and we need to give these a good wash. Okay, and in her recipe, she uses agar agar powder and i do have it somewhere but i can't find it so i'm just going to use jelly and i'm pretty sure this should work if it doesn't i can do it again with agar agar powder i'm just really late for the gym and i'm in a rush so i'm just mixing it all together with a teaspoon until the jelly powder is completely dissolved now we're going to pour some sprinkles into our balloon to make it look nice and pretty there we go and then i just found in the cupboard we've got some like fake eyes so i'm going to add a few of these too because why not? And fingers crossed this works. If it doesn't, it's fine. I do have the right powder somewhere, but I have a feeling jelly should be just fine. Okay, and now for probably the hardest part of all, which is pouring the jelly mixture into the balloon without burning myself. Oh dear. Okay, 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 okay. Yep. Ow! Okay, so I'm doing one more just to be safe. Uh, like this. Okay, and now we have our two little balloons. We're going to put these in the fridge and I will be back in about an hour when I'm back from the gym to show you guys. But I am going to try this with the agar agar powder as well, just to be safe. So in February, I went to Japan and I finally got to try Tung Hulu. But it was so expensive. For three strawberries, it was like £20. And I'm pretty sure it's extremely easy to make, so we're going to try and make it. I'm going to make a few different ones, but for the first one, we're just going to make it completely strawberry and we're going to put lots of strawberries onto our skewer like this. Okay, so I've made a selection of different types of fruit sticks. And by the way, I leave the leaves on strawberries because I always eat them. And now we're going to make our sugar coating. Okay, and now I've put lots of sugar in a pan and we're going to whack that on a heat and let it melt. And that's literally it. So something that costs £30 is actually only two ingredients. And for anyone wondering, here was the result of the giant boba from my last video. It looks gross. I'm stirring the sugar with a spoon to stop it from burning. Okay, guys, I added the water and now I'm coating the fruit with the sugar. I'll be back tomorrow with the result. Okay, guys, I'm magnet fishing at the harbour and we're going to throw our magnet in in a different spot to hopefully find something. Okay, we're going to throw our magnet in right by the boat so that hopefully there's a little bit more chance of finding something that's made of metal. <laughs> okay, we threw it in. Okay, guys, now we are going to pull it up very slowly. And... Okay, we've hooked onto something and I'm hoping it's just not the side of the harbour because there's actually tension on the rope. Like, you can feel it's stuck, see? Okay, and now we're going to slowly pull it up and my friend is helping me because it feels a little bit heavy. I don't know if you guys can see, but I can kind of see something. Okay, guys, we have actually found something and it's quite heavy, um, but it just looks like a little box. But we're going to pull it out and see what's inside there. I'm pulling it out in my next video because I'm running out of time here. I'm magnet fishing at the harbour and we just found something. Okay, so I think it is just a box, but it's really heavy, probably because it's filled up with water, but we're going to pull it out. And I don't know what that heart thing is, but I think it... Oh no, that's a lid. Okay, go. My friend is helping me pull it out. <laughs> okay, guys, we found a box. I can't get it open, but I'm just going to let the water come out of it so that we can actually, like, take it home. And I can actually hear stuff inside. So I'll be opening it once I'm home and hopefully we found something that's worth some money. As you guys know, I have a lot of animals and today is a very rainy day, which means it's one of these sad days where I just clean out animal poo and wash my animals which need a bath. So today is bath day for my not so baby fox cub Pongo. He's gotten huge in the past few weeks and I feel like every video I post of him, you guys will see how much bigger he's got. Pongo is not a pet you can have in your home as we only have a few more weeks of him being all cute and cuddly and then he'll be going into the farm where he'll basically turn wild as at eight months these guys get super super destructive and even a little bit aggressive. 
He's not just going to turn into this evil thing, but he will turn a lot more unpredictable and he just won't be suitable for a house. So we're going to wet his fur and basically get all of the pee soaked with water. And now he's all wet, we're going to rub some shampoo into his coat and get rid of that dirty smell. The sun has just come out, so Pongo can go and dry off in his enclosure.